Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk about serendipity alliums. We're standing here near our chicken coop in the cottage garden. Our chickens were just making a ton of noise, so I hope that they keep it quiet for just a few minutes because these are still in the shade. We're here in the early morning. Um, the other serendipities we have are in full sun already, which is what they want, in front of our gazebo, and they're absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you know, you get to this time of year, mid-August, a lot of our perennials, you know, they've gone through all the heat and they've already gone through a bloom cycle. They've gone through wind and they're looking a little weary. And that's where something like this comes in so handy in the garden. And those are the things I'm always looking for. Like what looks amazing while everything else is just a little bit weary. And these are just so wonderful. Now, there were a couple of questions I noticed that came through a lot on the pictures I posted. And the first one was, how are you getting alliums to bloom this time of year? Because they look an awful lot like the alliums we had bloom in the spring. These are a little different. They are cousins, they're in the same family, but these grow um, from a root, like a standard perennial, while our big showy, like globe master alliums or ambassador alliums, um, those grow from bulbs that we plant in the fall. So that's your difference there. The other question was, how do these compare to millennium, which is another very popular variety of this allium or ornamental onion, you might see that on the tag. These are a sport of millennium, so they're like sister plants, but this one has more of a blue tint to its leaves, which I like. I like the fact that when you plant it um, kind of like among a sea of green, uh, it has a little bit more contrast, a little bit more interest, and this one kind of is a twofer to me because even before it starts blooming midsummer, and then it blooms all the way through the end of the summer, it looks like a beautiful, unique ornamental grass because the leaves here are really strappy and thick and they provide just like this beautiful mound of gorgeous leaves. Also, these in like comparison to your spring blooming alliums, the leaves stay nice even after the plant is done blooming. While you know those alliums in the spring, they pro provide this amazing bloom, but the leaves are really big and then they start to kind of wither and yellow and they don't look very good. Uh, and you always kind of want to plan to plant something in front of them to kind of hide the foliage until you're ready to cut it back. The thing you do need to know about this plant as well is that as these blooms start to fade a little bit, which you can see a couple of these are starting to lose a little bit of color. Like there's some real fresh ones that are gorgeous and beautiful, but this one is starting to look a little tired. You do want to deadhead these if you don't want them to spread. So if you let them go to seed, you will have baby plants in the spring, which maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want them to kind of naturalize in an area. Can you imagine that? Like just letting them kind of spread themselves around and provide this amazing show every year. Like there are some areas where I wouldn't mind that. Hey, chickens. <laughs> I don't even know. She's just standing there. Do you need to go lay an egg? I zone four through eight, so incredibly winter hardy. These have been in my, this particular grouping has been in my garden since last spring. I have a few others that have been here for a few years and they do really well through our winters here. We live in Eastern Oregon, high desert. Um, and we typically, we've had a couple of mild winters, but we also get some fairly severe ones as well. So it's nice to have things that you know can handle that. They do prefer a sunnier location. This one does get sun for the better part of the day. Um, and I think I already said it's early in the morning right now. Um, so they're still in a little bit of shade. The pollinators are just starting to come out and visit. So there's a couple of honeybees, but once these things, once the sun hits them, they will be covered in especially honeybees. Butterflies visit them sometimes, but the honeybees will just be absolutely covered with them. They are deer and rabbit resistant because they're part of the allium or ornamental onion family. When you crush their leaves, they emit this onion smell that the deer and rabbits don't like. So if you deal with that in your garden, we don't. I've seen a couple of little cottontail bunnies in this spring, but I haven't seen them since and we don't have deer in our garden. So we don't deal with that, but I know a lot of you do. So this is a really good perennial option for you if you have that issue. And that's pretty much it. I just really wanted you guys to see what these look like when they're in their prime. I mean, I've got roses planted in between, but I've just deadheaded those because they kind of went through their second flush of bloom and they'll start coming back into bloom, but it's sure nice to have some of these kind of snuck around in this flower bed to provide some color and some beauty in this area. I just love it. And I just wanted to show you guys what they look like, like what you can expect them to look like in your own garden. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.